Hello all. Welcome to the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert Part 1. In this video, we will look at exploitation basics. Now, the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert or SMFE is our own certification for the Metasploit Framework. If you need more information or would like to sign up for the certification and or labs, please visit securitytube.net slash SMFE. Security Tube certifications are now being taken by students from over 25 plus countries around the world. This video series uh, is the SMFE course material has been made freely available to all users of securitytube.net under Security Tube's vision to provide quality yet free InfoSec education to one and all. Feel free to use and distribute this to anyone uh, who could find use for this video series. Now for this video, the lab setup we require is a Windows XP machine vulnerable to the MS-03026 and the MS-08067 vulnerability and we will actually use Backtrack as the attacker machine. In case you do not have this, please you could try and access the online labs to use this vulnerable machine. Okay, so before we begin, let me give you a basic understanding of some of the terms. A vulnerability is a weakness which allows an attacker to break into or compromise a system's security. An exploit is the actual code or program which allows the attacker to take advantage of the vulnerability. Finally, after the exploit executes and takes control of the system, whatever it goes ahead and executes next on that compromised system is basically called the payload. Now, let me give you a quick analogy about how exploitation works. So you can visualize a house with a weak lock. Now this weak lock can actually be opened by let's say a bump key or something else. This is the vulnerability. The very fact that the lock can be opened by keys other than the authorized one. Now a robber having that other duplicate key or some other technique with which he can open this lock without having the original authorized key is what is the exploit. So the exploit is the, uh, the robber's key or any other technique he uses. Finally, once the robber opens the door with his key, that is exploit, goes inside, then whatever he does is basically called the payload which may include going ahead grabbing all your jewelry vessels and whatnot on a more serious note in the typical case an attacker sends a combination of the exploit and the payload to the vulnerable machine or victim typically the exploit runs first if the exploit succeeds the payload runs next after the payload runs most common cases the attacker would have full control of the victim machine and then he can download data upload malware spyware whatever he requires right okay so now let us step back and take a high level view of the typical process of a compromise the first step is to scan the ip address find the open ports and services running on them Second is to identify which one of these services is vulnerable to either a public or privately available exploit. Finally is to use that exploit, couple it up with a payload, compromise the remote system and do any of the post exploitation activities that you want. So this is the typical process, right? I mean, I haven't gone through the whole information gathering, blah, 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 all of those phases to bore you to death. This is in my mind a quick synopsis of how you would compromise a system. So the very first step which we spoke about 
was to scan the IP address, find the ports and services, right? You would use tools like Nmap to do that. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, I have my backtrack machine, which is the attacker, and the Windows XP machine, which is the victim. So here is the victim machine, and here is the attacker machine, right? So let me run Nmap. no name resolution let me run it on the victim's IP address right awesome if you notice I get a list of ports and probably a list of services which may be running on that port now let's look at the next step now once you find the open ports you would really be interested in the services running there this is where we need to do a service fingerprinting scan for that, you can use the hyphen SV option in Nmap. So, here you go. And this should do a quick service printing. Right, and we find a list of ports which seem to be open, along with a version of service mentioned here, right? Now, the next step after finding the services uh, was to actually figure out if there is a vulnerability available, publicly at least to begin with, for any of these services. Now, it so happens that there is a vulnerability, right? And this one is the MS-03026, which allows for remote code execution. Now, these remote code execution vulnerabilities uh, is, is like the holy grail for a hacker. Why? Because this typically allows the hacker full control of the remote system. Now, you would need to go through the technical details and what you would see is the vulnerability lies in the RPC DCOM package. Now, typically you may go through all of these, but in the most common case, you would like to check if someone has already done the hard and dirty work of writing an exploit for you. In this case, it so happens that there are multiple exploits available for this vulnerability written by different hacker groups. Now, what I've done is I've downloaded one of these exploit files and now I'm going to show you how to run and use it. The URL from where you can download this file is mentioned uh, in the next couple of slides. So let me go to my backtrack instance. Now this is the vulnerable, uh, the vulnerability exploit. If I open it up, right, you may find a lot of info here, something which almost looks like the little matrix screen Right, don't worry, in the course of this series, we'll explore what all of these things are. Uh, and looks pretty decently complicated actually, if you haven't seen exploit code before. So let's go ahead, quickly compile this into an output file. We get some warnings, we can ignore them for now. Run DCOM without any arguments and it tells us to select a target ID and then a target IP address. So we run the file, give the target ID. I mean, I know the remote system is a Windows XP SP0 English uh, language version. So I say five, then give the IP address 1.150. Right, we wait for a second and voila, we get a shell on the remote system. Now for people familiar with this, well, you know that what's happened is we now have access to a shell which is running remotely on the Windows XP machine, which is our victim, right? Now, the way in which you can actually corroborate is by quickly doing a netstat-n, uh, sorry, netstat, N. and what you would see is that 
the victim 1.150 is connected to the attacker 1.10 over port 4444, right? This is how we are currently accessing the remote shell which we have. Now, quick validation is by doing an ip config, and if you notice, the IP address is 1.50, right? Now, this shell allows us to do a variety of things on the remote computer uh, with whatever privileges we have currently. Now, we have actually used a service level vulnerability, which means we have system privileges at this point. Which is fantastic, because that's the highest privilege possible, right? You could do a bunch of stuff, you could change directories, you could do a listing of files, typically anything you would have done if you were on the local computer with a command prompt. You could even type out the contents of confidential.txt, uh, it seems to be here, and it says this is some secret information, which was first all saved in here. Right, there's the file here. Okay, awesome. Now let's go back to our presentation. So, now that we've run the whole exploit and the payload has run and we have a remote shell, let me try and disconnect and see what happens. So, I'm here, let me exit this. Right, it says read failure. But now, if I quickly look at my Windows machine, oops, I have a little system shutdown prompt. Looks like our exploit did not do a good cleanup after it existed, exited. And this has caused the system to grow unstable, probably detects that the system state is corrupt, and it is forcing a shutdown upon you at this point. Right? This is bad. Because if there was a victim during your pen test, he would figure out something's gone wrong. Anyway, try this example out by downloading the RPC DCOM exploit file from the link below. Now, what are we getting at, right? There are many, many such vulnerabilities out there, right? One of the other vulnerabilities I'd like to demonstrate to you is the Net API vulnerability before we move ahead, right? Uh, which I'll probably do in the next video, right? Not in this video. I think we've already spent a lot of time. Don't want it to be too long, right? So challenges in using individual exploits, right? Just like the DCOM exploit which we have, there are dozens, if not hundreds of other exploits out there. Now to manage these exploits, to update them, to customize them, to suit your needs is a nightmare. And the second step apart from exploit customization is payload creation and customization, which is what do you do after your exploit succeeds and runs? Again, this is very, very non-trivial in the sense you need to be having a good understanding of assembly language, operating systems, programming, and a ton of stuff to be able to synthesize your own shell code for specific tasks. So basically what I'm getting to is there is a lot of work which needs to be done, which either requires a lot of talent or a lot of knowledge, and then finally, you may still end up, even after acquiring all of that skill, reinventing the wheel over and over again. This is where Metasploit is going to come to our rescue. However, we'll save that for the next video. So this was part one of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert uh, certification. If you're interested, please have a look at securitytube.net slash HMFE. Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of part one. Please leave your comments behind. Any doubts or anything you may have, students of the SMFE would request you to leave the doubts in the student forums where we will answer them on a priority basis. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead.